Hello humans, it is that time of year again where I make you feel better about yourself by telling you all the ways I wasted my life in the year 2018. I started off 2018 by living in San Francisco and trying to convince the doctors there to give me osseointegration surgery to allow me to walk again with a prosthetic. Halfway through the month, my partner moved in with me and we had a great time together doing absolutely nothing. I also learned about the cripple punk movement and met a person called Grey or Beethoven on Tumblr who would go on to become one of my closest friends. The combination of talking with them and being in the C-punk community taught me more than anything else ever has about self-acceptance and bravery and fighting to be treated right in this world. I went from feeling really shitty and isolated because of my disability to feeling good about it and having a community of people who were just like me and proud of it. So that was really, really good but I was still depressed because my quest to have osseointegration surgery wasn't going so great. I had already been trying to have the doctors in San Francisco do it for months, and I was getting pretty much nowhere, so I decided to look for other options. I contacted doctors in Pittsburgh and Maryland and tried to get them to give me the surgery, and it went very, very slowly, and wasn't really feeling very optimistic about it by the end of the month. And that's how, in February, I ended up involuntarily hospitalized for three days in a mental institution. And that did not help at all. It actually made things a lot, lot worse. I felt less like I was there to heal and more like I was being kept there as a punishment. I didn't receive proper physical or mental health care there. I had nurses try to deny me my meds. I didn't have access to a therapist or psychologist like you think you would do in a mental institution. And really all it did was make me more sure than ever that I had to hide my problems to ensure that I would never end up in a place like that again. In March, after months of fruitlessly asking other doctors in other cities to give me the surgery, I decided to look outside of the U.S. to get osseointegration. And so I decided that, hey, going to Australia is way more expensive, but I would rather do that and pay the money than stay here and maybe spend my whole life waiting for the surgery that I don't even know I'm gonna qualify for. Also during this month, me and my partner ended up having fun, fun relationship problems and they ended up moving out of my apartment. In April, I finally got approved for osseointegration surgery in Australia and I started working on things like visas and plane tickets immediately. My partner and I were still having relationship problems and we decided it was best that they stay in the US while I went to have the surgery. In May, my lease in San Francisco ran out and I was finally able to return to Virginia and get my cat back from my cousin and then pass him off to my friend while I went to Sydney for the surgery. After 10 months of waiting, I finally had gotten osteointegration. In June, I stayed in Australia while I recovered from the surgery. I went to physical therapy every day and generally was doing better than I ever had in the US. I was meeting my friends from the internet, learning new recipes, I got a tattoo, and I was really optimistic about my future. And so me and Gray started a Cripple Punk Discord and then started working on our biggest plan ever, a disability-centric commune. Doing this would allow not only me, but also disabled people all over the world to live in a small-scale socialist community, regardless of their physical abilities. Me and Gray had plans to live there together when we were both healthy enough to do so, and I returned to Virginia confident that our plans would work. And then in July, Gray died, one week before I was supposed to meet them in real life for the first time. I used the money that I had been saving to go and see them to go to their funeral. My partner met me in Chicago, and we stayed there for a few weeks to be close to their family. Eventually, I had to go back to Virginia, and my partner stayed behind because they had gotten a one-month-long job there. August was a month of mourning for me. I stayed alone at my place in Virginia, desperately trying to think of a way to carry out Gray's legacy. Some people from the Cripple Punk Discord decided, hey, maybe we should start a Cripple Punk scene. It was a really good idea, but we underestimated how hard it would be to work on a project when everybody involved was chronically ill. Also during this month, I started to learn how to walk with a prosthetic, but it was a lot more painful than I thought it would be, and that made things a lot harder. In September, I turned 20. Yay. But I was still super sad about everything. Being alone at home without my best friend to talk to online made things really, really lonely. So I went back to Chicago to be with my partner, and I ended up meeting up with one of my friends from the Cripple Punk Discord, and we had a great time doing 
stupid party games and sharing our deepest traumas. <laughs> I went back to Virginia with my partner, feeling slightly more optimistic. In October, I threw myself into preparing for Halloween, which was really fun, but it was also pretty much the only thing I was doing with my life. Yeah, I was slowly working and walking, but it was very slow going, and I didn't really know what I was going to do after I could walk well. With Grey Dead, I didn't really have the heart to work on the disability-centric commune idea anymore, although it still remains one of my long-term goals. In November, I went back to Chicago again to go to Grey's memorial party. I met up with a lot of my friends who also knew Grey, and we had a fun, crippled, death-themed slumber party. And I also took the cutest one on a date, which was all very gay and good. In December, I was back in Virginia, and instead of spending my time walking, I spent my time preparing for a surgery trial. It had finally been six months since I had had osseointegration surgery, and I was finally allowed to have spinal cord stimulation surgery, which would hopefully ease up the pain that I was constantly experiencing. All my hopes hung on this surgery, not just because it was the only way for me to walk easily, but because the opioids that I was currently using to manage my chronic pain were going to stop working soon. And after that, I would be in too much pain to live, let alone walk. So I had the surgery trial, and it didn't work. So yay for being in constant agonizing pain forever. But good things happened in December too, like I started dating one of my friends, and I brought them back home for Yule, and we had a great time doing nerd stuff together, just me, them, and my other partner. But during all that, in the back of my mind, I knew that I was well and truly fucked in the pain department. It's now January 2019, and if I don't find a solution for the pain soon, I genuinely don't know what I'm gonna do. Usually, I hate getting medical advice from strangers, but right now, I'm desperate. If you know of something that would help the phantom limb pain or the constant muscle soreness I experience for, like, why, please let me know in the comments below. Please keep in mind that I've already tried most things like meds, mirror therapy, acupuncture, spinal cord stimulation, etc. So yeah, in 2018, a lot of really bad things happened, but some good things happened too. I started completing two of the things that were on my bucket list one of which was Travel the World, and as I said, I went to Sydney this year, which was super fun and also super expensive, helped me end dying. And I actually got a group of real friends together, which is something I never thought would happen, and it's all because of Cripple Punk. In 2019, I want to get even more things done, though. One of them is the project I talked about last video, Cripple Punk Presents. We've run into some roadblocks, and everybody working on the project is too busy to find a way around them right now, but I still think it's a really good idea, and I would really like to complete it this year. I also need to work on getting my health needs addressed. Not just the pain, but also my mental health, so I am going to be seeing a therapist in a few weeks. Ugh. I hate therapy. It's never worked on me. Like, why? Just talk to a stranger about your problems? No thanks. And finally, my main goal this year is learn how to walk, and learn how to walk well. I want to be able to do the things that I used to love, like hiking, camping, living on communes. Me fighting all this way to get osseointegration surgery was all so I could go back to doing those things, and I really hope it's possible. But realistically, I know that if the pain doesn't get addressed, it won't be, so. That's super fun. I'm dying. So yeah, birth is a curse, existence is a present, all that. Happy New Year, and please like and subscribe. Peace.